By the end of this video, you're going to be graphing these absolute value functions at the speed of light. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. We're going to start off by graphing the absolute value of x, and after that, we'll talk about what starts to happen as we add and subtract numbers inside the absolute value and outside of the absolute value. And after we do that, we'll talk about what happens when not only we have numbers being added, subtracted inside and outside, but also what happens when we have a number being multiplied out front. And after we do that, we'll go through some more examples of that one that looks pretty gross and then another that looks even grosser it's custom fractions involved and after we do all of that I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments and by that point it should honestly be breezy and if you're like hey Ludus I love how your notes look I'd love to get a copy for myself you're in luck because not only have I made a printable version for these notes but the notes that I made also have a QR code attached that will take you back to the video and they have timestamps for all the problems that we're gonna be doing in this video these are some pretty premium notes guys and if you're looking for the link for these notes I got that right in the description. Anyways, enough talking, let's get into this video. So we're gonna start here with the basic absolute value graph, the absolute value of x. Now to graph this, I'm just gonna pull up a quick x, y chart. So we have x, y, I'm going to put x at zero and then just do a couple x values around it. And we'll see what happens to y for these different x values. So first off, if since y is equal to the absolute value of x, if we plug in zero, for x, then we get y is equal to the absolute value of 0, which is 0. So when x is 0, y is equal to 0. Now, what about for when we plug in 1 or when we plug in 2 for x? Well, the absolute value of 1 is 1 and the absolute value of 2 is 2. And so we'll get 1 and 2 here. Now, as you can imagine, when we do negative 1 and negative 2, we'll have the absolute value of negative 1 and the absolute value of negative 2 and those will give us 1 and 2 remember the absolute value just takes away the negative sign if 1 is there so we get 1 and 2 there as well and now we have some points that we can plot so we're gonna start at 0 comma 0 we're gonna go and plot 1 1 2 2 we'll plot negative 1 comma 1 and we'll plot negative 2 comma 2 and all that's left to do now is connect those points. So that is the graph of the absolute value of x. And all other absolute value graphs that we're going to do are just going to be variations of this graph. There's going to be two differences with all the other graphs that we do. The first difference is going to be with this turning point here. We call that the vertex of the graph. Those other vertexes in, in the other problems, they're going to be in different locations. So they might be anywhere else on the xy plane. And then the other thing that will be different is the slope. So just the direction of these little arms here. That's what we're going to see as we work through these other problems. So starting off here, we have y equal to the absolute value of x plus 2. And we see that we have that plus 2 inside the absolute value. So what does that do to our graph? Well, the graph stays almost entirely the same. It's just that with this plus 2, it's going to move the graph to the left or to the right. And if we had something outside of the absolute value, which I'll add in later, that's going to move the graph up or down. Now, this plus 2 here, does that move the graph left or right? Well, it's going to move the graph left by 2. And you might think, well, of course it should move it right by 2, right? We'll talk about that in a second. But as you can see, the vertex here was at 0, 0. That's where we start. We start from the origin. And all we're going to do is we're going to move the graph to the left by 2. And then we'll draw our arms here. Great, so now that we've done that, let's talk about that question. Why does the plus 2 move the graph to the left rather than to the right by 2? To do that, let's look at this vertex here. Now this vertex is at y equals 0. I know that because this is the y-axis. The y-axis controls how far up or down you go, and we haven't gone up or down at all for this vertex. It's right in the middle, so it's at y equals 0. So what would the x value have to be to make y equal to 0? Well, negative 2. If x was negative 2, then we get negative 2 plus 2, and that would give us the 0 that we're looking for. So x ends up being negative 2, and it shifts to the left. So the reason why the graph moves left instead of right is because it's all about x's response to this plus 2. So you cancel that plus 2 out, x has to be negative 2, hence the graph moves left. So that's the whole left-right movement. But what about if we had a plus 3 here? 
Well, now this plus three, that's on the outside of the absolute value. And so if it's on the outside of the absolute value, it's going to make the graph move up or down. And so it's going to take all of these y values from the absolute value of x plus two. It's going to take all of those and it's going to increase their y values by three. So that means it moves it up by three. So we're going to move this graph up one, two, and three. And there you go. That is how these different numbers affect the graph. And using these two numbers, you'll be able to find your vertex every single time like we're going to do in this next problem. So for this next problem, what's our vertex? We'll start with that. So I will say that this two out here, the two out front of the absolute value, we haven't talked about what that's gonna do yet. We will, but it doesn't affect our vertex at all. We're still gonna find our vertex in the exact same way. So our vertex here, it's the opposite of whatever number is in here. So it's going to be one for our X, and then it's going to the negative two here outside of the absolute value. It's gonna shift that graph down by two. So the Y coordinate of the vertex is gonna be negative two. So we can plot that point right now. We go over one, down by two, we end up at this point right here. Now, what is this two doing out here? Well, that's the other component that I was talking about. Remember when I said that the only things that change between all these absolute value graphs is the vertex and the slope, like the direction that the arms go in? Well, now we're gonna talk about that slope part. So if I do a little X, Y chart here, you'll see what ends up being the big difference. Our vertex is at x equals one. So I'm gonna make that the center here, and then I'll do the x values around that. So zero and negative one, and two and three. And I'm not gonna bore you with going through and you know finding all the y values by plugging in those values of x. You can do that if you want to. I'll just give it to you though. This is what your x, y chart is gonna end up looking like once you complete it. And the big thing to note here is that, well, with the first problem that we dealt with, with just the absolute value of x, Notice how we were going up by one in both directions. With this problem now, we go up by two in both directions every single time that we go over in the x direction. And that is no coincidence to this two right here. That two dictates how much we go up for every one that we go over in the x direction. It is our slope. So that's what that number means. And using that, we'll easily be able to draw this graph. So we'll go over one, and up two, and we'll do the same exact thing in the other direction, and then we'll just be able to draw our arms. Great, and so all you need to know to be able to graph any of these absolute value functions is that the main form for these absolute value functions is a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. There are three numbers here that you need to figure out, and that was two, negative one, and negative two in this case. The number out front, the a, that is your slope. And here, our slope was two. And then the H and the K is your vertex. Your vertex is H comma K. So it's going to be the opposite of whatever number is here. And it'll be K for the Y coordinate of the vertex. So here you can see we did the opposite of this negative one here. So we put a positive one. And then the negative two stayed the same. And that was the Y coordinate. So that gave us our vertex. And if you have the vertex and the slope, you can graph any of these absolute value functions. And you'll see that in our next example here. So using what we know now, we can just do this example pretty quick. Now, I don't like how this one here is uh, on the left side of the absolute value. I'd rather it be on the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this equation as negative the absolute value of x minus three and then I'll put the one over on the other side, it'll be plus one. And that's just the commutative property, right? It might be a little weird to see with the absolute value and stuff, but it's the same thing as saying negative three plus five is the same thing as five minus three. That's all I did here. I just switched around the terms. So now that it's in this form, we can quickly see what our vertex is. What is our vertex here? Well, it comes from these two numbers. First, for the x-coordinate of our vertex, we look at that negative three and we do the opposite. So we make it a three. And then for the y-coordinate of the vertex, for our k, it's just the one. We don't change the sign there, we leave it alone. So that's the vertex. We go over by three and we go up by one. And then what's the slope? 
Well, the slope is this negative out here, so, so what number is that? Well, you can think about it as being a negative one. And negative one means that every time we go over by one, we're gonna go down by one. And we'll do that exact same thing in the other direction as well. And then we just draw our arms. And that's really all you need to do. Now moving on to the last problem that we're gonna be doing in this video, let's again figure out what the vertex and the slope are. So the vertex, I mean, to find that, you should have two numbers. You should have a number inside the absolute value and you'll have a number outside. But as you notice, we don't have a number inside the absolute value. It's just the absolute value of x. And so that means that the x coordinate of the vertex is zero. You could think about it as being the absolute value of x plus zero, right? That's still the absolute value of x. And you'll see here that now, oh, the number is zero. And that should make sense to you too, because if you look at the first problem that we did, just the absolute value of x, there's no number inside the absolute value. And so that vertex doesn't get shifted to the left or the right at all. So that's just connecting to some earlier stuff that we did. Now the y coordinate of our vertex, that's gonna be negative two. And we can plot that point right away. So zero in the x direction means that we're not going over left or right at all. We're just gonna go down by two. That's what the negative two does. And now, we just need the slope, which is that number that's being multiplied out front. That's the one fourth. Now remember, slope is equal to rise over run. And so that tells you exactly what you need to know about the one over four. Every time we go up by one, we're gonna go over by four. And that will put us right here. And then we'll do that in the other direction. We'll end up here and we can draw our arms. And that is graphing absolute value functions in a nutshell. Really, it's just about finding the vertex and the slope. So if you're feeling pretty comfortable with that, then here is a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here we have negative one half times the absolute value of x plus three plus two. So I know you can't draw a graph in the comments or anything, but you can, in the comments, give me the vertex of this graph and give me the slope of the graph as well. And if you wanna describe exactly what the graph will look like and in any more detail, feel free to do so. But yeah, the vertex and the slope will suffice. So let me know what the answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now remember that the notes for this video, the printable notes are linked in the description. They're a great resource to have, they're free, so you might as well just snag them. And yeah, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 100K, we'll get there eventually. I just gotta record like, I don't know, 100 more videos. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video, and I'll see you guys soon.